So we have two separate issues here. They're going to add 0.24 moles of hydroxide to one liter of two different buffers. So case A and case B. Well, let's look at these buffers. Here it's sodium dihydrogen phosphate. Well, so is this sodium dihydrogen phosphate and sodium hydrogen phosphate, same thing. Uh, what's that all about? That's the first thing we got to figure out is what are those and what do they mean? What's, which one's the acid and which one's the base? So if you ignore the sodium, except for the fact that a sodium has a positive charge, then you can identify that the dihydrogen phosphate has a single negative charge. And here, because there are two sodiums then, the hydrogen phosphate has a double negative charge. Aha, so that means this one's more positive than that one. And then you can double check and see, oh yes, this had two hydrogens, this has only one. So this is in fact creating a hydrogen ion, to think about it in terms of the old method of writing it. <clears throat> or we could go ahead and throw it in as the reaction of the dihydrogen phosphate interacting with water in an equilibrium to form hydronium ions and the hydrogen phosphate ions. And then we can see that that's a conjugate acid to this base, that's an acid, and this is its conjugate base. So this is all set up so that we can go ahead and work with it. Well, let's start by doing the first one, A. They're saying, oh, it's one liter. It's one liter and this is the molarity. Well, then I can simply say it's also the same as the number of moles. Okay, so that's what I will do. For my initial concentration, I'll say it's 1.16 moles. This is the water, don't care. Separate these. This is going to be a very small amount. Why do I know that it's a very small amount? Because this is a weak acid. And it's not going to end up producing very much of this especially compared to these, this kind of numbers of moles. Over here, this is also a 1.16 moles. So there I have that. And I recognize, hopefully I recognize, this is actually part of the phosphoric acid series. Remember when we did the triprotics and we talked about, oh, phosphoric acid was H3PO4. This is part of the series as you start one by one taking the hydrogens off. This is the second step because it was H3 the first time around. So I can go and look this up. I can find out what the pKa is. I would find out that the pKa for this step in the phosphoric acid series is 7.19. And I would have found that in table a5.1, which I believe we've mentioned that table before. So this though is part A because I filled in the 1.16. And I can see that right now, if I were to use uh, the Henderson-Hasselbach equation on this, this is 1.16 over 1.16. I would just end up saying that right now, initially, the pH was the same as the pKa, which I've just looked up. So I for initially to go with this. Then what am I doing? I'm throwing in 0.24 moles of OH minus. When I do that, it's going to pull this away, right? So it's pulling this direction because I added OH minus which reacts with this. And every time it uses up some of this, it's gonna pull more over this direction, like the Chatelier says. So I know that this is being pulled 
And the only way I'm ever going to get rid of all of this is if I create enough of this to react with it. So I know how much the change is. It's this 0.24 moles minus 0.24. This is being used up to create this in order to cancel out the OH minus. When this breaks apart, it will also produce the 0.24 moles over here. And then for the equilibrium, I can just write it down, 0.92. And then, well, it's a small amount. I guess I'll figure that out later. It's still going to be a small amount. And this one will have gone up to 1.40. I can go ahead and say what the pH is because they just wanted to know. They're talking about the change in pH. Well, I know what it started at, and now I'll just figure out what it was. The pKa plus the logarithm of the base, that was the 1.40, over the acid, 0.92. When I get done using my calculator on all of this, it'll be 7.19 plus 0.18 is 7.37. Now I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing for this one. It's still the same reaction with the dihydrogen phosphate and the water in, a, in an equilibrium with hydronium ion and hydrogen phosphate. Initially though, I am starting it's one liter of this, so the molarities can be changed into moles, because if I multiply it, so 0.58 moles. This is some small amount, and this is 0.58 moles. At first, it doesn't seem like this should make any difference, because I mean, they're, if I do Henderson-Hasselbach on this, I'm going to get the same thing, that the pH is the same as the pKa because 0.58 over 0.58 is 1 and the log of 1 is 0 and so I won't change it. It'll still be the 7.19. But in this case, when I add, well actually on this side, I'm making this fall apart, right? Because the OH minus is pulling it this direction. This will be added here. And when I do the equilibrium, my numbers are going to be different. I'm going to have a 0.34 here. I'm going to have some small amount here. And I'm going to end up with 0.82 here. When I do Henderson-Hasselbach on this, it's still the 7.19 and I'm taking the logarithm. But now it's of 0.82 over 0.34. And when I do that, I end up adding... 0.38 and I end up with a higher pH. Even though I added the same number of moles of hydroxide. So why is that? This has a stronger solution. So there are more moles of it available. And here it's a, just a little detail. This was pKa2 because it was the phosphoric acid sequence. So it was the second hydrogen being removed. So that would be the appropriate Ka to use. And we're using that rice table with moles in it because when I add this, it's listed as moles. Even if it was listed as a uh, a volume of a molarity, you would want to go and figure out how many moles there were because this would be how much H plus you need to cancel it out. But the bottom line here was this one that had more, a stronger um, concentration, but in essence, it had more moles of the phosphoric acid sequence. Did not change its pH as much as the one that had 
fewer moles available to it. And then we have a picture to try to explain this. There's the pH of the buffer, the 4.75, for example. That's a different example than this one. But if the pH of the buffer is that, then depending on the buffer concentration, it will be able to either keep the change less or have more change depending on the concentration. So as you can see here, the deviation above and below from this dashed line, as you have less concentration on your buffer, the deviation for adding the same amount will be more significant. And that's what we saw here. This was a more significant deviation, 0.38 instead of 0.18, when this was a smaller amount of stuff that we were working on. And this is called buffer capacity. How much can the buffer hold until it ends up being completely broken? So the pH changes are going to be inversely related to how much buffer you've got, your buffer concentration.